If you want to learn some cool math, introduction to proofs, set theory, abstract algebra, go down to link and subscribe to my channel. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you guys why we have to be careful whenever we are trying to divide both sides of a congruence by a same number. And let's take a look of 30 congruent to 42 mod 4 first as an example. And first of all, let's just do a quick check. 30 divided by 4 is 7 with the remainder 2. Likewise, 42 divided by 4, we get 10 with the remainder 2, right? So, yay! <laughs> they are both congruent to 2 mod 4. So we know this is true. And now, let me just try to divide both sides by, let's say, 6. And be sure we still get whole numbers in the end, right? And things like that. Anyway, let's see. Here, 30 divided by 6 is just a 5, of course. And 42 divided by 6 is just a 7. But now, are they still congruent? Mod 4. Well, let's see. 5 divided by 4 is 1 with the remainder of 1, right? And then 7 divided by 4 is 1 with the remainder 3. So this is actually congruent to 3. And you see, the left hand side we have 1, the right hand side we have 3. Of course, this is not true anymore. And notice that the reason that this is not true is because you have to be worried about what number you are dividing and the mod number right here. You have to look for the greatest common divisor of this and that. In our case, we divide the 6 on both sides, and this is mod 4, right? And the greatest common divisor of 6 and 4 is a 2. And if this number, if it's not equal to 1, we are not allowed to divide on both sides because we end up with another congruence that's no longer true, right? So be really careful when we are trying to divide both sides of a congruence by a same number. And let me just demonstrate another example. Let's take a look again with 30 being congruent to 42 mod 4. This time, let me divide the left-hand side by 3 and also the right-hand side by 3. Divide both sides by the same number, of course. And you see that on the left-hand side, we have 10. On the right-hand side, we have 12. No, actually, I lied. <laughs> 14. <laughs> anyway, are they still congruent to each other? Mod 4. Well, let's see. 10 divided by 4 is 2, which remains the 2. And then 14 divided by 4. 4 is 3 with the remainder 2, right? <laughs> by the way, these are just like the Adidas signs, but anyway, this video is not sponsored by Adidas, I just realized that. Anyway, this is 2, that's 2. Of course, here we have a happy face, right? Because this is true. Notice, this time, this is true because the greatest common divisor of 3 and 4 is 1. So let me just write this down. The greatest common divisor of 3 and 4 is 1. When this and that are relatively prime, meaning having 1 as their greatest common divisor, we can actually divide it on both sides. All right? So this is what you have to check before you can actually divide. If the greatest common divisor is not equal to 1, just like this right here, we are not allowed to divide the 6 on both sides and then still maintain a uh, the same congruency, which is no longer true. But anyway, we will have to go through a proof for this, right? So let me write this down for you guys. Here is my claim. And let me just write down the following. Suppose we have k times sum number a that's congruent to k times sum number b, like this. And everybody is an integer, okay? And you see that we have to make sure the things that we get after divide a same number on both sides, it's a whole number. So that's why I put this down as k times a, likewise k times b, because I want to divide both sides by k, right? Just like this right here, I cannot divide both sides by 11. I cannot do that. So I have to make sure they have a common uh, factor on both sides. And suppose this is ma n, like this. From here, if we have the assumption that the greatest common divisor of k and n being equal to 1, then we are allowed to say that divide this by k, divide that by k. In other words, we can get 
a is congruent to b and this is still true mod n like this and technically i should be using the word divide i should say multiply by the uh, multiplicative inverse on both sides but yeah dividing is dividing dividing is like david however yeah anyway you can see what i'm doing anyway so here we go here is the proof for this all right let me start with this right here so i will just say starting i'll just say since we have k a congruent to k b mod n let's subtract k b on both sides yeah so from here we can say this implies k and once i subtract this on both sides both of them will have the k so i can factor out the k right so k times a minus b it's going to be congruent to zero and then we still have to write down the mod n Yes, I know, we have to write down the mod n many times. Just like when you're doing limits in calculus, you have to write down the LIM many, many times, right? Same thing, just deal with it. This is life. Anyway, well, since we have this is congruent to zero mod n, that will tell us that this has to be a multiple of n. In another word, we can say n divides that. And in fact, that's one of the ways to interpret this congruence, right? And let me write that down. Let me write down n divides k times a minus b like this and from here this is the good time to take a look of the other assumption namely the greatest common divisor of n and k is equal to 1 namely n and k are relatively prime and the idea is that if you have n divides this but n and k are relatively prime that means n has to divide the other factor, namely a minus b. And I have another video on proving that statement. You guys can check that out. I will have the link to the video in the description for you guys, all right? But from here, let's just say, but we know that the greatest common divisor of k and n is equal to 1. So, of course, n doesn't divide k, but the main thing is that you have to quote the greatest common divisor of n and k is equal to 1. In order for us to conclude that, n must divide a minus b like this, okay? You have to quote this. It's not because n doesn't divide k. It's because the greatest common factor of these two is equal to 1. And I also went over that in the previous video, so check that out. Anyway, from here, n divides a minus b. Earlier, we had a congruence. We went back to the device. Now we have device. We can go back to congruence, right? So this right here will tell us, this right here is a multiple of n. In another word, a minus b is congruent to zero, and this is the mod n. In the end, we can just add a b on both sides. So we can finally conclude that a has to congruent to b, mod n like this and as you can see we did it right so draw the box shade this in feel so happy life is so pretty right anyway hopefully you guys like this video if you guys want to see more number series videos you guys can check out my channel um, for my other videos or check out max's channel for more proof based videos and things like that all right so hopefully you guys all like this and let me know if you guys have any questions whatsoever as always that's it Well, well, I forgot to be honest.